Okay, so moving on, we got to think about how we're going to tackle this light. So what I'm going to do again, I'm just going with this color scheme here. I'm going to make the light kind of like an anodized um, flat dark earth metal. Um, so that should just add to this whole black and tan color scheme we got going on here. Um, it is actually pretty common. The lights come in both black and tan most of the time. Even the actual suppressor that I end up putting on. Um, let's see. So the suppressor right there, they come in black and they come in tan. I don't think I've seen them in any other colors just from the, the Google searches that I've done. So that's what we're going to do. With this, we're just going to make it tan. But I think eventually when I bring the suppressor into substance, I'll just leave it black. Um, maybe. I mean, I you know, the nice thing about substance, you can have multiple uh, texture layouts. You just put them in different folders. So depending on how you want to do it. Okay, so I kind of laid out the color scheme here in Maya when I first set this up. This is just simple colors. But you can kind of see what I was going for here. And, but this one I left black. I think I will. Now, the, the switch and everything will stay black. The light body itself is where we'll put the tan. So we'll, we'll have some black and tan on there. Okay. So let's go ahead and get started. So these lights are actually made out of metal. Um, obviously, the, the, the switch here is just black plastic looks like. And there's some parts on here that might be metal in the back here. And then, of course, the connecting piece, I think, we want to leave black. Okay. So what I'm going to do, control shift and right click on my light. It's going to take us to that texture set, which is this guy right here. Okay. So we've also got a piece of glass right here. And just to make things easier, because there's stuff in there that I need to be able to see. So what I'm going to do here is come into my texture set settings. Hit the plus here to add a new channel. And that new channel is going to be opacity. So make sure you put opacity in there. Now you'll notice that under anything now you have an OP. Uh, on any material you got an OP now that's for opacity. It's By default it's off. So if you need it for any particular object you can just turn that on. Okay, I'm going to delete the first, the default layer. Let's just go ahead and, and put some uh, opacity on that light. So let's just put a new fill layer in there. And we'll call this glass, I guess. And opacity is on, but you'll notice if you scroll down, opacity. Let's make sure that you can see this here. Yep. Um, opacity is at 1. So, oh, you know what, what I forgot to do is we need to change, where is that? There's a whole bunch of stuff you got to do. Uh, da, 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 da. God, I forget where this is. We have to tell substance to use. No, that's not it. Here we go. Under the shader settings. Right now it's a, it's a PBR Metal Rough. If we click on that, we want... Uh, PBR Metal Rough with Alpha Test, I believe, is the one that we want. Let me see what the other options are. Oh, is it Alpha Blending? Oh, boy. Let's try Alpha Blending. If it's not, we can always come back. So let's try this again now if we do this. And it's doing this because it's on the entire thing. So right now I'm going to put it back to one, and let's just tell it to be only on the glass. So... Let's put a black mask on there and then hit four and we want to say mesh fill and let's click on our glass here. I don't know if it's selected or not. Let me change the color to something. Let's go red and yeah, I think it. I, I over selected here. So what I'm going to do is go back in the mask and hit X. And then we can remove everything else. So 
The glass is the only part that's red. Just making sure that nothing else got selected. I don't think it did, but we can always fix it if it did. Okay, so then we can drop our opacity and you can see it now. We can see through now. It looks like I'm missing. Oh, you know what? I think what happened. So if I go inside of the glass here, go back to my and hit four, go back to the mask, hit four, hit X, and we're going to bring this guy, yeah. So the reflector dish got, had that opacity material on there. Now I've taken it off. So now we have that, okay? Um, and we want, we want a pretty low opacity here, just because it is glass. And I just made it red, just so we could see through it. I think glass usually has a slight twinge of green in it. Very slight, I think. Um, and we want our roughness pretty low because we want that glass to be pretty shiny. You can see the reflection in there. Um, so you can see what's going on there. Uh, we don't need any metallic. It's not metallic. And then if we want to have the glass be kind of dirty, we can use a grunge map. So if I start typing in grunge, we can throw a grunge map in there. You want a grunge map that is um, pretty dark. If you have it really light, you're going to have, well, let's see what happens. Is it going to be noticeable? Okay, I'm not getting very good things going on. Let me go back to opacity. See if my map is showing up very well at all here. Hmm. Let's try one of these. Let me... Let's change the environment map and go with... I don't know. Pick one of these random ones. There we go. You can you you can see it. So there is dirt on that lens. It was just really hard with that lighting setup. So there we go. You can see it much better there. Okay. Of course, this lighting setup is now tinting some of the colors. Might not be too bad. But okay. So we have that there. So if I drop my opacity some more, we have dirty glass. You can still see through it, but it is dirty. So let's go. Try some one of these other maps here. See this one? Yeah, we got some. We got some stuff going on there. So that's pretty nice on there. So I guess it doesn't really matter if it's the dark colored opacity map or a uh, grunge map or not. Let's try this one. That one's got big splotches on there. It doesn't really look very good. Um, we could also. Increase the tiling, but I don't, I don't think I like that one. Um, let's go back to one. Actually, let's go to about, I don't know, five. And let's get... There's a whole bunch of maps here. You can spend all day playing with these. Um, da, 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 da. Stains. This is Grunge Splashes. I don't know. You can um, play with that to figure out what it is you want. And then if you actually want to see visible dirt, you could mess with the actual color. So, let me see. I don't know. Grunge. What is this one? Fingerprints. Might be interesting if you've been touching the lens a lot. Okay, so... It's there. Anytime you have glass, generally you don't want it to be perfectly clean, and you know you want to you want to throw on a roughness map to smudge it up and things like that. Just makes it way more realistic. Um, like I said, we could be here all day playing with these things. So I need to just make dirt scratched. Let's try that one. So. These are, you know, this one is visible more from some angle. Like, that's really dirty. You got some really clean, semi-clean spots, but the rest of it is just really 
filthy, so that might be a little much. It's kind of why I like the darker shaded ones. Uh, what is this one? Grunge leaks. Grunge leak dirty. Okay, so I mean, you know, go through what you pick the one that uh, that you like and call it good. Let's see, yeah, you can kind of see them right there. Okay, so I'm gonna leave that. Um, I'm gonna export the roughness map for it, but the the uh, the opacity of it will be set up in in Maya when I do the renders in Arnold using transmission, so that we get a little bit of refraction. The glass does have thickness to it, which is something that uh, I always recommend you do when you're making little things of glass. You want to give them thickness so you can have some kind of refraction going on there, so it's not just a flat plane. Okay, so that's that part. Next part I want to take care of here is, let's go to, I'm going to hit F1 to show my UVs. I want to get to the reflector dish in there, which I think is this piece right here, I think. Uh, okay, so let's, let's make uh, some chrome. Now, because this is inside of the light, it's not really going to have all kinds of damage and, and smudging and things like that. It's probably going to be very pristine, very clean. So that's what I'm going to do here. Let's do another fill layer. We'll just call this one Chrome. And for this, I don't know, it's, it's Chrome have a black base color. I, I never remember. But the roughness, I'm going to set almost all the way to zero. I'm going to turn metallic on. Um, I'm going to turn off, turn off opacity. I don't need opacity on that one. And maybe it needs to be a white base. Oops. There we go. That's kind of chromish. Might be a little too chromish, so I can put back some of that roughness. And then, of course, we need to mask it, so do a black mask. And we're going to select this piece right here, which is our deflector dish there, or our reflector dish. Okay, so let's go back to the material here, and again, I'm just going to increase the roughness. I, I, it's a little too reflective. Okay, so now we have that really shiny reflective surface in there. All right, then moving on. Now we want, let's just do the, the main body color, uh, the metal that's going to be used here. So this light is it's sort of loosely based on the real light by a company called Surefire. Um, it's not an exact copy. I, I like to sometimes just add my own flair to things. I don't think the real one has this knurling or whatever you call it here. I think it has it back there, but not up here. I just wanted to add it here um, just because I like the look of it. But it's entirely up to you how you do it. Um, okay, so for this, I am going to make a folder. And we'll call this one FDE Metal get a new fill layer put it in the folder turn off opacity i'm going to set my color and if i remember again it was 11 30 and where did my mouse go there it is 41 was the color and then I want to uh, metallic, set that to one. Now that's a little too gold. You know, I think um, the environment map I'm using might be affecting that. So I'm just going to go back to the default one, which is panorama. 
Okay, so that's going to give me a little better. And then turn on my roughness. I want to turn that way up. And then increase my height, 0.0, let's try 2.5. You're not going to see anything because there's nothing beneath it. Let's bring back some of this roughness. Don't want to lose all reflectivity, we just don't want a lot of it. Okay. And again, I might just shift this. Tan color a bit. Okay, so I'm going to select the folder and I'm going to put a uh, black mask on that. And then I'm just going to pick the parts that I want this to be on. So, again, we're using uh, mesh fill here. So, I'm going to click this front piece, the bezel right here. And you got to be real careful because Substance does like to select things through the mesh. So you don't want to mess up some of the stuff you've already set up. And I think, yeah, I think this is about all I need here. So something like that. And then, as per usual, I'm going to get my steel rough and put it in the folder at the bottom. Okay, let me save my work. That was a little weird. Give it a sec. Okay, come on. Yeah, sometimes it will take a second. Especially now that I've added layers and stuff. Come on. Wow, it's really taking a while. Um, but anyway, yeah, I'm just going to do the same thing I've been doing. I'm going to put a generator with a metal edge wear on there. And then I'm going to start to fill back in where I need to, uh, if I need to. I might, I might just turn it way down. Um, the light is out there, so if you're going to bump into stuff, it's it's not unheard of to, to for that light to be bumping into stuff. Um, so there might be quite a bit of wear, so we'll see what we can do now. This thing is still telling me it's saving. This is this is excessive. Oh, it, okay. I was, I was thinking maybe it crashed, but I guess it didn't. All right, um, so let's just name this FDE, and let's put a black mask on there, put a generator, metal edgeware, let's give it a sec, yeah, things are slowing down here, okay, so that is really worn down, so let's invert that, now that light looks like it's been through hell, we don't want it to be that bad so let's drop some of the wear level curvature weight okay so we got some nice stuff going on here now now I think about it if this is anodized then you wouldn't get that sort of height map so much see what it looks like at zero because at least the way i understand it and i could be totally wrong on this when you when you anodize a metal you're not painting it you are actually changing the color of the metal but i don't know i don't think it goes all the way through the metal so if you scrape at that metal you might get back to the original color of the metal you know i'm i I'm no expert on this stuff. So, whereas when you've painted it, you got that, you know, I don't know how thick paint goes on, but that fraction of a millimeter of paint, you can represent that with by putting a little bit of height in your, uh, in your shader for the paint. 
so that when it's scraped away, you can actually get that little bit of dimension there. So I think, again, I'm not, I'm not an expert on these things, but we'll, we'll go with that. Um, so when it's anodized like this, I think we're going to have no height. I kind of do like the height because it just gives you something, but let, let's go with this and see. Um, so I'm going to go back in that mask again, metal edge wear, and let's play with this. Now, if this light is getting banged up while it's on this gun, it's, go it's probably just going to be banged up on the outside, the bottom side, and the top side, and, you know, the front. But the, the, the side closest to the gun is probably pretty well protected where things can't really get in there very easily. So it might not be as banged up. So what I want to do is, is maybe bring back some of some of the, the uh, paint scratch, the, the scratch paint in there. So let's add a paint layer. And hit one. Okay, so let's get a brush. Is there two? Why not? Going to increase my flow. And this is just going to put back a lot of that damage. Okay, because likely it's not going to be getting hit on, you know, this. Here, let me. So the this, this, this space between here, not too many things can get into versus the outside. So some things might, you know, but it's probably not going to be near as much as what's happening on the bottom of the sides. So I'm just going to bring this back in here. And then over here, I'm going to hit X, might actually increase it a little bit. And I could actually use, let's go to Smart Masks. And... Go stain scratches. See what that gives us. And that's insane. So let's invert this. So I don't know. Drop the curvature a little bit. And you'll notice that it's completely overriding what's below it. And that's because we didn't set it to multiply, so when you put it to multiply, it'll just it'll combine with what's below it. And I don't know, I don't know if I like this or not, but let's see. Now again, I have damage on the inside here. Now, see what happens if I take my paint and put it above there. Now, I get the painting out of that stuff there. This might be a little too much damage here. Let me just. I mean, I kind of like it at the same time. Let me hide this one and try a different one here. Subtle Scratches, another one I use quite a bit. And again, we are... So it's just another uh, metal edge wear. Let's invert this one. So this one is just a very scratched up all over. Set this to multiply. Yeah, I don't know if I like this one. This one might be... Let's drop the wear level a little bit. So let me hide that one and show the other one. See, I like sort of these scratches going on here. So I don't know if I'm going to keep this one. And I'll get rid of the sharpen as well. Uh, surface worn. So let's hide that one and bring on surface worn. And all these come back inverted. Maybe I should have used the white mask, but I feel like it does it anyway. So this is just a wearing down of the surface. Which honestly might just be a little much to me. So I don't like that one. Okay, so I mean, you know, you can try any of these. I know some of them are like rust and whatnot. And you, you can still use them. Um, let's see. Just because it says rust doesn't mean it can only be used for rust. It's just different ways to, to chip away 
at these I don't think I like that one either okay so I'm not gonna go through all these here um, I think I do like what this one is doing here um, so I'm gonna leave it I'm just going to add a little bit more to this paint Let's just fill in some of these now I don't want to fill everything in I don't want it to be completely perfect on this side okay I don't know um, just oops the more that I look at it I don't know if I like this color for this light to be honest with you let's see what it looks like as a black light so let's just take a really dark gray well now that damage is really excessive you see before you couldn't really tell it was this much just because that color was so light um, mm -hmm. undo yeah I don't know I don't know I think it's gonna grow on me a little bit <laughs> okay um, for now let's you know what let's try that other trick too with um, smart materials let's go in and not smart materials just regular materials I'm gonna use my rust course and let's tile this to say five so it's not so big detail wise and let's put a black mask put a generator and do a dirt okay so now we, we you know we're sneaking dirt in the crevices obviously it's a little too much actually it's quite a lot too much so you can see like in here we got this dirt inside this rim here which I actually kind of like we've got dirt here which would I guess be like the battery cap that you would unscrew so dirt gets in there you know dirt tends to do that um, and that adds it adds a little bit of contrast to this the texture here which I actually kind of like and just yeah looking at it when it was black it was like wow that's that's a lot of damage there but you can see all the scratches a lot of these scratches don't really come through very well with the lighter texture so if I was gonna if I was gonna keep this light black I would certainly tone this way down and you could see that that dirt shows up even more and um, in the space between the gun and the light you can see we have way more um, so I don't know let me let me go back to tan here see it doesn't, doesn't feel as excessive here but I could put a paint layer in here and just just tone this down a little bit so what I can do is drop my flow on my brush and wrong one let's hit X starts to let's make a bigger brush and drop our opacity I believe okay I, let me drop my flow a little bit more okay so we could just just knock it down just a little bit Okay, we don't want it to be too much. Okay. Now we gotta obviously keep in mind that you know we we'll have some kind of decals and things on here, so they need to be included there where the paint is peeling away, or well, it's not paint. Sorry, where where the the metal's been scraped up. If there was a decal there, that's got to be scraped up too. So we have to. Um, we have to take that into account as well okay but we will do that a little bit later okay so for now let's let's leave that part I got a little sort of rubber gasket thing in here that I want to um, get going so that's gonna be its own uh, fill layer We'll just call this rubber 
and we will make it you know dark gray I mean, you'll notice I never go all the way black because it never looks right don't need any opacity I don't need any metallic and I need to mask this so at a black mask hit four select that guy and you can hit one to get out of there okay so there we have our rubber right there and rubber generally has decently high roughness you're not going to get a sharp specular on rubber it's going to be pretty wide specular so I'm going to increase that roughness don't really need any height and you know I might just keep that simple like that okay and now the cable is going to be black plastic so I'm gonna look up uh, this light I believe it was called the Surefire Scout Light and let's go in the images here and see what we got so there's there's lots of different variations here there's some with where the, the uh, tail cap just has a button on it that you press there and then some that are connected to some kind of switch that's all that you put on the rail and you can see that you can also go back and forth between the, the, the tail switch with the button or using the cable. So, you know, this is just some kind of black plastic or rubber. Um, let me see. And then we have the, the FDE ones here. So this is kind of like the one that I made just... I sort of embellished that. Um, let's see. So it looks like this, this one looks anodized, but the last one kind of looked painted. So maybe there's different styles there. Fortunately, I don't know enough about these. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> So, yeah, so we could just make it, let's go with this. So you can see there's a gray section right here. And then we have sort of black rubber. And then we have sort of black plastic back to black rubber like. And this is a different switch than the one that I modeled. So let me see here if I can find. Here we go. Here's, here's the... Uh, Here's the switch on its own here. So this is what it looks like. That that kind of looks like rubber to me. I mean, it could be plastic too. But this pla the, the plastic of the, the cord looks a lot shinier than this. Or this. These almost look like the same material. And then this looks like something else. I could be wrong about that. I'm not entirely sure. But yeah, you can see how sort of uh, matte this is compared to this I mean this is grayer than this I don't know what I did there so let's go back here and and we'll do that we'll make one sort of a shiny shiny ish plastic and then rubber so for the rubber then we can I think the rubber is going to be this section and this section and then this is going to be like a grayish metal okay so uh, let's Go into the mask. Looks like I've selected something here. Oh, this is the this is the rubber from there. So I could actually just use the same rubber. Um, let's make it a little less dark. Yeah, something like that. Okay. So all we got to do now is click in the mask, hit four, and we're gonna add in. The didn't want that this and maybe see what we do if what happens if we add this and this in there it's a little too gray 
So again, let's go back down. Something like that. Now, I just want to make sure that this button or whatever this is, is the same. It looks like it's the same material. So let's go ahead and add that one in as well. Right there. Okay. And then we're going to make some new fill layer again. Plastic. We're going to take this, make it pretty dark. And we're going to put a black mask on that and select our cord here. Okay, you can see that there's a difference there. There's some shine there now. Don't know if I want it that shiny, but I definitely want it more shiny than the rubber. Okay. I don't need an opacity channel. I don't need a metallic channel. Okay. And again, once we get down to the serious details, you know, the thumb, the, uh, the person who used the gun would use their thumb to operate um, this switch a lot. So you would get, you know, how things get shiny when they've been pressed a lot. You get probably a lot of that there, especially if they're doing it with their bare hands. Uh, so I'm assuming this is a button, but I think this is also like a, a, a pressure pad or something here. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think if you press down on here, it'll turn the light on and then you let go, it'll turn it off. And again, if I'm not mistaken, if you press this button, then the light stays on. Now, don't quote me on that. I've never used one of these, so I'm not entirely sure. Uh, and then let me let me come back here real quick because this is bugging me. And let's knock back some of this dust right here. It's a little strong. Okay. Okay. Switching back and forth between a mouse and a pen. By the way, if you are having trouble with carpal tunnel, these type, this type of mouse right here, it's a vertical mouse. I am not affiliated with this company. I'm not a spokesperson, but I've been trying this and I'm, I'm getting used to it. So you can see how the mouse buttons, oh, weird, there we go. Uh, you can see how the mouse buttons are kind of vertical up and down or at an angle compared to your traditional mouse. Takes some getting used to, but it's actually starting to work pretty well. Usually I'll wear a wrist brace one of these jobs here but when i use this mouse here i don't really have to thus far so again i'm not affiliated in any way with them but it seems to be working for me at the moment okay uh where were we here now we need this grayish metal here and then we need the metal that we're going to use for this this attachment clip or whatever you want to call it uh, which has this wheel underneath for tightening. And I think that's just going to be black. In fact, I might just, I might just steal the black from the, uh, let's see. Um, let's go to this guy here. I'm going to steal your gunmetal folder. So let's copy that and then go back here. You know, this is really useful. Control shift and right clicking on any piece here will take you to its texture set. That's incredibly useful uh, for going back and forth because now I don't have to sit there and, you know, because these are numbered according to the UDIM number. So I don't have to sit there and try to remember where is the what, which one is the light on and whatnot. I just control shift and right click and it'll take me there. Okay, so let's paste our gunmetal here, which is very interesting how it's doing that um and let's put a black mask on it and then hit four 
and start picking these parts right here. Nope. Nope. It's kind of annoying how easy it is to mess up the selections in here. So you got to get in funny angles just to get it right. Well, what did I do there? Okay, and then this guy. I think that's all. Okay, now again, I gotta, I gotta come in here. Go to is it here? Yep, metal, I can get rid of this paint layer because it's not gonna work for this. Metal edge wear. Maybe drop the curvature amount. Drop the wear level. Trying to see here what the best. So something like that. This guy here has got a lot of wear in the bottom. Which, you know, if you... Sometimes shooters will lay their gun on something to get a stable platform. Uh, so it kind of makes sense that that would get scratched up a little bit down there. And honestly, I'm happy to leave that as is. Maybe just take the gunmetal color and gray it up a little bit, just so it's not so dark. Um, I just want to slightly differentiate it from the rail that it's on because that, that was the same texture we just took. So Okay, so that's uh, okay. Kind of liking where we're going here. Um, this rubber is, let me see. It's bugging me. I think I just need to drop that roughness a little bit. It's a little too matte. So like I said before, I, I just, I see something and I go back to it. And who knows, in an hour I might see it again and change it back. But that's, that's how this goes. Uh, okay, so finally this sort of metal connector part here, which is sort of grayish metal. So let's let's make a new fill layer. Call this gray metal. Some people spell gray with an A. I guess I spell it with an E. Uh, okay, then get our black mask on there. And hit four and select these two pieces. Oh, probably can't see anything because it's just white. Let's make it red. Okay, there we go. We got them. So now we can make it that grayish color and make sure we set our metallic to one. Now we can actually increase the gray and then push our roughness because it's not a very shiny metal okay so I increase my value here something like that um yeah okay then we got some parts inside of our light here. So what I can do again is bring back, just hit F1, I'm going to bring back my UV view. So it's an LED light, and it's got a little, this, this sphere here is like a half dome over the top of it, so that's, that's made of glass. So what I need to do is come to my glass mask over here, and I want to add that dome. Now, I, it's kind of a pain in the butt to try to get to it from here. In fact, it won't even go any further in. I'm not sure what that's all about. So I got to remember where that is in the UVs. And it's been a while since I did these UVs. It's probably this guy. Let's see. Maybe not. Maybe this. There we go. That was it. 
Okay. And then there's like an LED. It's just basically a square, uh, which would be the, the the emitter itself, the LED emitter. Um, but I feel like I can just slap a shader on in Maya for that one. And then the actual like floor plate there, I think I'm just going to put that in the chrome. And where did it go? I just saw it. There it is. So that would be this guy. So like that. Oh, and there's something else back there. Which might be this. Yeah, well, after you do your UVs, you might want to get to doing the texture soon because if you let it sit for, for uh, weeks or months, you come back, you can't remember where anything is. Let's try, maybe I'll make that rubber just to give some contrast there. Um, or actually, you know what, let me put it on the gray metal. So is it this guy? Yep, that was him. Okay. Don't know where the... Actual LED itself. Yeah, I think that was it. And these are usually, I think, yellow. So just, I guess just so we can see it. LED. Now, I didn't, I didn't really model it very um, detailed because it's such a small thing that I didn't feel like I needed it. So, here and then I'm going to select that. I'm going to make this, this some kind of yellow color. I don't know. It's more for just looks. Okay, so something like that. Okay, so you can see we're very quickly getting, or almost completely gotten rid of the white. Uh, for here, you know what, I'm going to, let, let's come back to this. Control, control, click, control, shift, right click on that. And my two pieces of glass here, uh, I'm going to make a new fill layer. And make sure that this isn't getting put in any folder. So we'll call this glass. Put a black mask on it. And oh. Actually, let's go in the glass itself here. <clears throat> and for this texture set, I, I had not set up opacity, so I need to make sure that I do that. So it only does it for the texture set that you're on. So opacity, oh crap, I'm getting an auto save here. I gotta, remember, I gotta save more often. I wouldn't mind auto save so much if it was saving over the, the working file, but I, I get it why it would wanna make a separate file. Okay, so let's turn on opacity and do I need to re, well, I didn't, oh yeah, I didn't pick. So let's go ahead and I'm going to pick this guy and this guy. Okay, now they are opaque. I might have to do some work to model some stuff to put in there. I'm not really sure what, what's on the inside of a scope like that. Um, but you can tell there's nothing there at all. So I, I'm going to have to do more research into what you can see there. Um, and right now there's no refractions or anything like that. You, it's probably going to be a little bit later. So I know that the glass has a bit of a, like an orange tint to it. Something like that. I don't know. But that is one of those things that I can get to later. That is a render time kind of issue. So I will definitely get to that. Let's drop the roughness. Actually, put a, let's do what we did with the other one and put some kind of roughness map in there just so that, as you can see, the surface 
It's a shiny surface, but it's also dirty. So I'm getting a little bit of pinching here at the, at the pole in the center. Let's try stains. Nah. Fingerprints dirty. Okay, so, I don't know. You can find one you like. Fingerprints dusty spread. I don't know. It's not really dusty, but whatever. Okay, that'll work. Did it put it? Yeah, I put it on both sides here. don't like that orange. I think it needs to be more red. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to start hiding some of these see what else I've missed. I'm sure there's some parts that I've missed. Everything looks fine there. Uh, I want to see. Yep, there we go. So I, mean, I knew I missed something. So that is 1005. So let's get rid of everything. Oh, wait a minute. Where'd it go? There it is. So it's actually a 1013. Okay. Uh, let's get rid of... There we go. So this, these are the what they call the feed ramps. This, basically, these parts right here allow for smooth feeding of the round into the chamber. This will... It's just like a steel, honestly. So what I'm going to do is... Make a new fill layer. Let's call this steel. And for that, you know, you know, screw it. Why not? Let's just use steel rough as the steel. Because again, this thing is inside of the gun. You're probably not even going to see it anyway. So let's. Okay, mask it, black mask. Select this piece. Um, yeah, I mean, honestly. Let's increase the roughness just a hair. And call it good. I think I'm okay with that. Gonna hit F2, F2, yep, to hide everything. So I'm just gonna turn everything on, I think. Now I have a trigger pack in here that honestly, I mean, I could texture it, but I don't think I will because um, it's, it's not doing anything. It's gonna be in there and hidden. So I may just delete it from the file later. So I'm gonna leave that there. And what else here? Let's turn everything back on. Okay, so this is what well, this is good for our first pass. Laid in quite a bit here. Save this and then let's try some renders. As soon as it's done saving. Hopefully sometime this week. Think about Substance is a very powerful program, um, but you do need a pretty decent computer to to deal with it. It's just there's a lot of things going on, and they're very intensive. Very they require a lot of resources. This computer's actually got two two video cards in it, two uh, 2080 Ti's. 
So that helps a lot. I got 36, 32 core 64 thread processor in here. And I do have um, 128 gigs of RAM. So it's a pretty beefy system. And still, you can see how long some of the saves do. Now, mind you, that's probably not a problem with the system. It's probably just a hard drive thing because I am using a standard hard drive for my storage. I do have one of the um, NVMe M.2 drives um, as my OS drive. So that's that's real nice. But those things are expensive and I wanted a lot of storage space. So I bought a couple of four terabyte drives, which are just standard drives. So they do take a while to write, especially if you're working a six gigabyte file. So that's probably the issue more than, you know, power. So this is what we have here. Let's go ahead and start a render. And then in our next video, we can start detailing stuff, you know, putting the decals on and then really getting it dirty. And what's, what's happening here? IRA warm up. Okay. Warming up. And I changed the pen. No, I can't. And we're just going to take a while here. Oh, here we go. Um, uh, use that. Okay, iRay is says it's warming up, but it's not really doing anything. And I might have crashed. Um, this is why I save before I turn on any renders. But let's I'm gonna give it a couple seconds here, and I'll pause the video and come back when it's. And if I have to restart it, I will. But I'll be right back. Okay, so got it started. It's having a lot more trouble. I think part of that is the opacity that I activated um, is really causing this thing to, to, to chug a little bit. You can see now I before I could sort of rotate freely and it would clean up relatively quickly. Now it's just taking a while to do that and and my guess is because of that uh, opacity and and honestly the opacity I only activated so I could get the glass effect in substance I'm not going to be ex exporting any of those opacity maps um, because of the transparency of the glass I'm going to be using transmission in Arnold not opacity so it was just for in here so i may i may end up turning it off if i want to be able to do renders in here or i'll just take it into uh maya and render it with arnold just so we can really see what's happening so yeah i'm gonna kill this this is it's struggling um so like i said substance does require that you have a pretty beefy system and even then like i said mine is no slouch it's it's a pretty new system but still this is this is happening here, so um, I mean, I am recording video at the same time, but it shouldn't be to the point where it's causing this much um, of a hassle here. I can't even like break it out of here. There we go. Okay, so oh, okay, we're back. <laughs> so yeah, my guess would be that that opacity is doing that. It's got to be what it is because it was never this slow before. Plus, I've added more shaders. I don't know. Could be a combination of things here. Um, so this is where we are and so far so good. I'm actually liking what it's looking like. A lot of the damage is pretty, pretty subtle. It's not super scratched to hell. Like I've seen, you know, some people will do that. They'll just, just beat the hell out of there. Their guns just almost just because they can, and um, I'm trying to avoid that. I want that damage to be there, but I want it to be a gun that's been used, but not. It hasn't been dragged through five wars, right? So it's gonna have some damage, but not that much. So I think this is a good start to that.
And uh, so I, I think I'm gonna call the video here today. Next video, we will begin really starting to detail the stuff. Um, decals, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And then we'll go from there. Um, maybe I'll even start next episode with a test test render in, in uh, Arnold. Show you how to set up all the shaders with after you've exported everything out of Substance. And this is one of the reasons I use UDIMS is because, as you can see, each texture set represents a bunch of image maps, right? So for each one of these UDIM texture sets, you're going to get one of the channels here. If I hit C, you're going to get your base color, your height, your roughness, your metallic, your normal, and that's just the... Okay, so that, that was so... You're going to get your color, height, roughness, metallic, normal. Okay, so I don't know how many was that. One, two, three... Or five. So you're going to get five per texture set. And there's what? What was it? Ten? Ten texture sets? Something like that? Ten, ten or twelve? Uh, so five per. So that could be like 50, 50 different maps that you have to connect and everything. But with the UDIMs, you literally do it one time. You connect the, the maps as a single thing once, and then it'll read all the different UV tiles from there, so you just use you just have one shader. Um, so for me, that that that's really nice. Um, and we're gonna export these at 4K. I don't know if we'll need to have them at 4K, but we'll we can always make them small. I like to make them bigger than you need, um, just so that if you need to, if they're too big, you know they're slowing everything down. Cut them down to 2K, but if it's if you got them at 2K and you need to go up, well, now you got to come back to substance. But with, with uh, them at 4K, I can just throw them into Photoshop and run a batch action, just scale them all down, and then export them. Okay, so I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and hit the notification bell, and we'll see you in the next one. All right, have a good day, guys.